idea of good changes. And the same thing as we're, as we're, as we're encountering God during different circumstances, sometimes the way we define God changes. Something horrible happens, we say he's uncaring. He's distant. When we come into the presence of the Lord and we can encounter him, we say, he's so good. And sometimes we feel like we've left him in Ilford 316 as we head home. Because we th say he's so far. The concept of good changes. But I want to make a statement, and I've been saying this for a number of years. God is good, full stop. God is good, full stop. And, and you know, we, like I said, we're doing the Bible plan. And I've been going through um, the, the book of Genesis. Let's turn our Bibles there. Just look at verse 10, Genesis chapter 1, verse 10. Then he called, then God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters, he called it the seas. And he said it was, sorry, what? Good. He said it was what? Good. He said it was what? Good. He said it was good. And if you go on, every time he made something, what did he say? It was? Good. It was what? Good. It was good. Say it was good. Say it with definition. Say it was good. It was good. Look at verse 31 of chapter 1. It says, and then God saw everything that he had made. Say everything that he had made. And, say, and it says that indeed it was very good. Okay, nudge your neighbor and say very good. Say very good. Say very good. Say very good. Now, when he found that man was alone, he said, that's not good. And then he created male and female. And then it was good again. Right? Are you with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, one of the things, one of the first things, I mean, as I'm reading Genesis, I'm thinking, there is, you know, when we isolate ourselves it isn't good. It isn't good. How many times have we made ourselves alone and we feel blah, like mush? How many times have we gone into a situation where we say, I'm going to be alone and we haven't been blessed by it? Being alone with God is a good thing because then you're not alone. But it is, it is, there is something in fellowship. There is something in opening up your heart to another person. There is something good in friendship. There is something good in love. I don't care how many times you've been hurt. You can't use it as a wall to prevent other people from coming in. Because you know what? The number of times you've been hurt, you've been hurt. You've hurt somebody else. And this year, I'm taking it as a, as a decision. This isn't even my talk. This is a bonus. This is a bonus. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know that, that voice inside you telling you to stand alone? It is not good. Wait one minute. It isn't good. Because we were made to be our entire body. Hallelujah. You know that voice that tells you not to trust somebody because they'll hurt you? That's not good. Because you're stronger than their power to hurt you. Does this make any sense? You know that voice that tells you, if you do this, you're going to get yourself injured. I mean, I'm not talking about jumping off a building or something like that. I'm talking about emotionally, isolating yourself. It is not good. I, this isn't even my talk, but I'm going to stay here. You know, 
You know, people who've isolated themselves, you know what they feel? Alone. Wait, one minute. And most of us don't like being alone because the scripture says it's not good. It's not good. You walk into a crowd and you say, nobody's talking to me. Go talk to somebody. Wait, I'm just brilliant today. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> How many times do we say nobody talks to me? And can you tell me the expression that we have on our face when we say nobody's talking to me? It's difficult to talk. We have to go to them and say, lift up their face. So this is my life mission. Okay? I, I'm going to start talking. To, I'm going to start trying to talk to everybody. Who's with me? Can we be a, bo a bunch of chatterboxes? Can we? Imagine a church where everybody talks to everybody else. Oh, that's a radical idea. Hallelujah. If you've been coming to this church for more than two weeks, you're a member of this family and you should be talking to other people. So if you're feeling alone, it's because it's not good. Go talk to somebody. You know, yesterday, just to improve my ability to converse, I watched a TED Talk on how to... How many of you know what TED Talks are? There's like seven points on how to, uh, how to be a better conversationalist. And I found out the things I'm doing wrong. I, I'm going to try it today, okay? Okay? So let's start talking. Anyway, this is the only time he said it was not good was he when he found that man was alone. Every, otherwise, it was always very good. So this isn't my talk, but I, I want to encourage the church. If you're feeling lonely, go talk to somebody. The ball is in your court. Nudge your neighbor and say, the ball is in my court. <laughs> to go talk to people. <laughs> to go talk to... The ball is in my court. And just to let you know, um, I'm never too busy for anybody. I like talking to people. I do. And anybody can come and talk to me whenever they want. And as a church, we have an open door policy. I work at the church from... <laughs> Um, other than Mondays, I'm here most other days. So if you want to book an appointment to come and see me. Why book? Because otherwise you might not see me. You know, I might be with other appointments and stuff like that. But come. And th there's always food in this house. So sometimes when people come, you know, they get a meal. Sometimes they just get water. It just depends. Okay. <laughs> During the fasting and prayer season, you might not get anything. Okay. But just letting you know. Is it all right if I talk to the church like this? Yeah? How many of you like the people in this church? So let's show it. For those of you who are new, which I'm just, this is our vision for 2017. We're going to love one another. Is that all right? How many of you have missed speaking to certain people in the church in the last year? Yeah? So let's make it a point. Is this all right? So grumpy is finished in 2016. And gladly has come in. Yeah? I will gladly talk to people. I will gladly serve in God's house. I will gladly read the word. Okay, so... So now, God said everything was good. He made everything. And, and the Lord said, don't eat of two trees. One is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Say the knowledge of good and evil. Say the knowledge of good and evil. Say the knowledge of good and evil. Not, not the tree of good and evil, but the knowledge. Say knowledge. Now, go like this. Say knowledge. So that we get this. Say knowledge. Knowledge. Say the knowledge of good and evil. Right? 
And then what tree did, and, and the other tree, the tree of life. Now what tree did they eat of? They ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? And so what happens after they ate of the tree? The, we know the scriptures that we call it the, the, the when they ate of the fruit, we know that the scripture said, what, what does it say? It says that they fell, correct? Now what happened to them? They had the knowledge of good and evil, right? And what was the first thing Adam says after he eats? He sees evil in his wife. That's the first thing he sees. When God created the heavens, when he created the earth, when he created the plants, he looked at everything and he said, it is good. When man fell, the first thing he says is he says, it is bad. He says, it is bad. We stop seeing things with the eyes of the Father. Are you getting me? And even today, when we look at things, we can see things in two ways. We can see things as good or we can see things as evil. We have the knowledge to see it both ways. Man was created. God knows the beginning from the end. He knew what would happen, but he still said it is good. He said it is still good. Now, when, when the fall of man happened, what happened was gradually, even the way we see God changed. We stop seeing God as good. Every time somebody gets sick, we'll say, it is God telling them to stop what they're doing and come back into his arms. That's not God. Sickness is not from God. Wait a minute. Sickness is not from God. So, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sickness is not from God. God. But how many of us have been conditioned and programmed to see God as evil? Every time something, something happens, we'll say, it was God who did it. I got hit by a car so that I could go to the hospital. And then in the hospital, I could encounter God. If I hit any of you with a car... I wouldn't be considered good if it was on purpose. It wouldn't be considered good, is it? So why would we consider God in that same eye? So, so I'm trying to think of, change the way I see things. First of all, I have to change the way I see God. And over this, you know, I know I started, spoke about this a few years ago, and I've been hammering at this truth that God is good but I see the lie of the enemy has come in and stolen this truth once again what did say what does Satan tell Eve he said has God indeed said making you doubt God's word and he said God doesn't want you to be like him that was what his implication was but the truth of the matter is God wants us to be like him. Hallelujah. He made us in his image. And then when, when, uh, when we fell, he sent his only son. So that it was no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Because you know what? When the fall of man happened, death came into this world. And when I was born in this physical body, my spirit is dead. My spirit was dead. And when I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, my spirit became alive. And I have the new life experience. And when the new life experience comes, I live through Jesus Christ. Does this make sense? But my mind needs to, I need to have the mind of Christ. And in 2017, I'm going to say a truth 
that we all need to adhere to. God is good. God is good. He's not in a bad mood. He's not far away. He's not in hiding. He is available. He will answer. He will not give us more than we can bear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we always are aware of a God who's pointing to our sins. I want you to turn to John chapter 8. The scripture says there that the woman was caught in the act of adultery. Hallelujah. The woman was caught in the act of adultery. Verse 11 says, verse 10 says, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? Say, has no one condemned you? And she said, no, Lord, no one. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. This is Jesus. He doesn't want us to sin anymore. But he is not the condemning God. He is not the condemning God. I don't know if you're struggling with this. But many of us struggle with a, with a God that we feel is looking at us and saying, that is not good. That's not our God. He's a God who's loving. Turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 20. Verse, this is, the great white throne, verse 11, says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was, no, there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, and this was the book of life. Say, the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works. Say, 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 the dead were judged according to their works. The living can't be judged. Because I live. When my name is in the book of life, I am alive. When I'm dead, I am judged according to my works. When I'm dead in the spirit, I am judged according to my works. And works can't get you into heaven. Are you with me? Works doesn't get us into heaven. Faith and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ gets us into heaven. Are you with me? So what gets us into heaven? Faith gets us into, the, into heaven. And the scripture says there, and verse 15 says, And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. It's not works that gets us into heaven. It's faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. But I don't know if you notice this. The judge... In this case, was the deliverer himself. The judge was the deliverer. Who is the deliverer? Jesus Christ. Let me write this. Let me do this another way. RLSM had an exam. Okay, the Revival School of Supernatural Ministry. Um, sorry, you and I, oh, we set the question paper. I okay, suppose I had set the entire question paper. Okay? I set the question paper, and I came over here, and I answered the question paper. Right? And all you had to do was write your name 
on the top of it. So you have two choices. Either you can write your name on the question paper that I answered, because Jesus is the answer. Okay? And you can submit that. Or you can try to answer the question paper yourself. Maybe you'll pass, maybe you won't. Which choice would you take? The first one. You said second? You'll write your name, right? Now, who's the judge? I am. Correct? But who's the deliverer who answered the question? I am. Correct? So think of how easy I've made it. When I'm the judge as well as the deliverer. Many of us in this position only see us, see the Lord Jesus as the judge. And we think, how unfair is that? But we fail to realize he is the deliverer. That he has given us provision to have everything answered pertaining to life. Hallelujah. Not only on this earth, but in the earth to come. He, in this portion of scripture, is judge and deliverer. He is good. He is good. And I was thinking about it. You know, in the book of Judges, the scripture says there that the a number of times, not your neighbor, say number of times. In a number of times, we find over there that the people of Israel fell away from God. And when people fell away from God, God sent forth a judge. But it wasn't, we think of a judge as one who condemns. But, uh, but the Lord's definition of a judge is one who delivers. That's what he's done. In the book of Judges, he has sent a deliverer to deliver the people. Our God is good. I'm, I'll give you scripture reference. Turn your Bibles to jo uh, Judges chapter 2. Judges chapter 3, verse 9. Judges chapter 2. It's, it, you just read it at 18. It says, And when the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was, was the judge and deliverer, uh, judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judges. This is a shadow of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the Lord was moved to pity by their groaning because of those who were oppressed and harassed them. When we think of judges, we think of people who will condemn. But in the Bible, the concept of a judge is one who delivers. Are you with me? Are you understanding what I'm saying? He's, the Lord says, when people were harassed and oppressed... He was filled with pity and compassion. We think he's uncaring. We think he's only judging. But he isn't. He's delivering. It's, there's an incorrect view of God in our system. It's a virus. It has to be purged out. It has to be purged out. He was judge, but he was also shepherd. Hallelujah. There is a revelation of an outrageously good and loving God in this Bible. He's outrageously good. And he's outrageously loving. And your circumstances don't determine who he is. Hallelujah. Your, our circumstances don't define God. 
Now, many of us think that God sent cancer to teach us a lesson. No, God sent Jesus to teach cancer a lesson. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We think that God is using our circumstances to teach us a lesson. No, God sent the teacher that is Jesus Christ to teach us who he is. Hallelujah. And he said in Luke 15, he said, the kingdom of God is such as a woman who's lost her coin and searches for it. As a, as, a, um, as a shepherd who's lost a sheep and is looking for it. That's our God. That is our God. Who is searching for us to restore us back into his promises. The third time in Luke 15, he says, the kingdom of God is not like a prodigal son. You know, the word prodigal occurs only once, and that is how we refer to that story. The one word in there that is evil. Actually, it should be the story of the loving father. Because it is more about a father who's restoring than about the prodigal living. We often only see the negative. We often only see the spot on a t-shirt. You know, have you ever worn a white t-shirt and you just get that one spot? And nobody else notices the whole whiteness of your t-shirt. But that one spot, what that? What that? They don't notice it. Every else was you've kept clean. That 99.9% .9 of that t-shirt you've kept clean. That one spot. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah? Yeah? So the whole time you're having a conversation, you're covering that one spot. And usually it's somewhere over here for me. Like, <laughs> it's like the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the Lord came so that we could be delivered. Come on, everybody with me. <gasps> There's a lie that's going around that he doesn't care. There's a lie that's going around that he isn't powerful. Yeah, it's, it's not the Lord who's a liar. It's the enemy. Yeah? You know, whatever situation it is, the Lord can heal you. Whatever situation it is, he's the, he can deliver you. Whatever situation is, it will work out for your good. Amen. That's the truth. That is the truth. Amen. The truth is, whatever situation it is, you will not be defeated. Amen. And you know what, the, what, what you will not be defeated means? You will be victorious. Amen. What? That's what it means. So there's no place for us to be grumpy. If you say that's your continence, you need to start looking more like your father. My father, who sits in heaven, he laughs. Some of us need to work on it. We've been looking like our previous father. You know, insurance policies have a, a thing called the act of God. Okay. Have you heard of this in your insurance? There's a clause called an act of God. If something bad happens to you and it cannot be explained, they blame God. And if it's deemed as an act of God, you, they won't pay out. You know, we had an act of God. <laughs> we were in Wales. We were at um, Mariah Chapel, you know, and uh, we were with insurance people. And we were, Jeevan was there, Rakesh, um, we were all standing together and um, we were talking about this thing called act of God. 
in insurance. And uh, I started laughing. Jeevan started laughing, like, what kind of act of God can happen? And the, there, was a, there was a Michael there. And this Michael said, well, if a tree falls on your car, it's called an act of God. And I said, well, in India, a tree can fall on your car. Okay. In, in the UK, a tree can fall on your car. Okay. Okay. And then we were, and we were laughing and we were like an act of God. <laughs> okay. We were just like that. Not, that was Jeevan laughing. I laughed normally, like normal people. <laughs> so then we went into Moriah Chapel. How many of you know about the, uh, the Welsh revival and that it started off at Moriah Chapel? And we went in there. We encountered, uh, uh, like we were just praying there. And um, while we were there, it was a clear day. This huge wind comes outside and a tree falls on top of our car. So we come out. Yeah, we come out of Moriah Chapel and there's a tree on our car and it's and we're thinking act of god <laughs> act of god and because we had just had this conversation that we wouldn't get insurance compensation you know there was a bump on the top an act of god okay but that i mean i don't know if god took a tree and threw it on top of my car he had other ways to get my attention he, in a, and I'm tired of people blaming my father. Yeah. I'm so tired of it. I'm going to stand up for the truth. Amen. My father is good. Hallelujah. How many of you are just going to stand in that truth? Amen. Our father is good. Our father is good. Exodus 34 verse 29. You're thinking, these are random set of scriptures. How many of you are blessed this morning? You have to say yes. <laughs> Exodus 34. Verse 29 says this. And so it was when, Ma when Moses came down from Mount Sinai. And the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain. That Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with God. His face shone because he talked with God. His face shone because he talked with God. I learn a few things about this one line. One, I can talk to God. Two, it will have a physical effect on my being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It will change my continents. Hallelujah. Three, if I encounter darkness, I'll be dark. But if I encounter light, I will be light. Hallelujah. His face shone because God is light. He's bright. He is beautiful. He is full of love. That's the effect, the radiance that came upon our God. That came from our God. You encounter something good. You know, if you go into um, a, a house where there's a lot of Indian cooking, you come out smelling like the Indian cooking. <laughs> Have you ever walked into a perfume store and you come out and you're like, you smell a little bit better. Because you're walking by and they're like, try this. You know, somebody sprayed me in the eye once. They were quite tall. <laughs> Their hand level was my eye level. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I had beautiful shining eyes that day. 
Do you pick up the aroma of the one around you? Yep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is good. I don't care what your year is like. I don't care what your circumstances are like. I don't care what your situation is like. That does not define God. It does not define his power. It does not define his name. It does not define who he is. It does not define his ability to save me. He is great, awesome, mighty, and he's loving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he is able to save. He is able to save. Romans 8, 38 to 39 says this. For I am convinced. Say convinced. Say convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor present things nor things to come nor powers nor height nor death are in or in any other created thing will be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus my Lord. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Hallelujah. Not your neighbor and say, nothing can separate me. <laughs> say, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Say, today he loves me. Oh, come on. No, no, no. I say, today he loves me. I don't care what the lie of the enemy says that he's not happy with you, but today he loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me today. Not just tomorrow. Not just yesterday. But today, he loves me. And nothing can separate me from the love of this amazing God. I don't care what my circumstances are. I don't care what your circumstances are. I don't care what you feel like. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. My name is written in the book of life. And my judge is my deliverer. Amen. Hallelujah. He's my deliverer. Hallelujah. And I like it. How many of you like it? I like it. I'm going to have so many testimonies. By the end of this year, you're going to have to put up notices boards everywhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm, you better write you better print big testimony cards from me. God, I'm going to be writing it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody get up and praise God. Hallelujah. Ah, nah, nah.